everyone. This is our third video in the series of how to solve quadratic equations with the quadratic formula. And in this video, we're going to tackle what happens when you get an irrational solution. So before we do that, I found a topic that I know we need to review quickly, and that is how to simplify square roots. So let's talk about this for a minute. You guys, if I try to take the square root of 20, and I have Desmos open to help me, I'm going to get what's called an irrational value. And an irrational decimal is one that continues on forever and ever and ever and ever and has no pattern to it. I could not turn this decimal into a fraction to simplify. So this is called an irrational value. And when we are working with quadratic formula, we do not want to mix decimals into our equation. So we'll have to do something called simplifying an irrational value or simplifying a square root. So let me walk you through a little reminder about that. In class, we use something called a factor tree to simplify radicals. So let's start with 20. I can think of two things that multiply to make 20. I could use 4 times 5. You might have been thinking 2 times 10, and 2 times 10 will work also. The goal here is to keep breaking the factors down until we get a list of all prime numbers. So 5 is a prime number, so that side of the tree is done. 4 is not prime. I can break 4 into 2 times 2, which are both prime numbers. So the square root of 20 could be rewritten as 2 times 2 times 5. Well, the shortcut here is you are looking for pairs. If you have a pair, that pair can be pulled out of the radical or factored out of the radical. I'll do this the longer way so you can see the full explanation. If I put together 2 times 2, that's the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. And the square root of 4 is a regular 2, and the square root of 5 cannot be simplified. So my final simplified version of the square root of 20 is 2 times the square root of 5. A lot of us got to the place where we did not write this step. We saw that there was a pair of 2's and we wrote it out front. Let's do a second example. Oh, by the way, before I continue, you can take your work here and check it with Desmos. If I type in 2 times the square root of 5, whoops, I should get the exact same decimal that I got when I typed in the square root of 20. That's how I know I did my rationalization correctly. Okay, next, square root of 48. Well, there's lots of things that you could break 48 into. You could do 2 times 24, 4 times 12, 6 times 8. It doesn't matter where you start. We're going to end the same way every time. I'm going to go with 6 times 8. 6 is, prime, is not prime, so I need to break that apart into 2 times 3, and now each of these are prime. 8 is not prime, that's 2 times 4, and 2 is prime, but 4 is not, so I need to do one more level, and two, uh, 4 is 2 times 2. So no matter how you break down 48, you're going to get 1, 2, 3, 4 2s, and a 3. 1, 2, 3, four twos, and a three. Okay, well, if you're doing the shortcut method, you have two groups of two, which means there's gonna be a four out front and a three left over on the inside. If you want the longer explanation, multiply all of this together. Two times two is four, times two is eight, times two is 16. So you've got the square root of 16 times the square root of 3, and the square root of 16 is regular 4. I like the method where you find your pairs, multiply them together, and put them out front. I think that's a nice, fast way to do that, and then anything left over stays on the inside. So I'm going to continue with that method. It's, it's much quicker. And some of you can even do that from the factor tree itself. 
So it saves you a little more time. Okay. All right. So let's work on 150. You guys, anytime something ends in a zero, you know it can be multiplied, or excuse me, divided by 10. So this would be 15 times 10. Neither of these are prime, so keep dividing. 15 is 3 times 5. Both of those are prime. And 10 is 2 times 5. And both of those are prime. So the square root of 150 has 1, 2, 1, 3, and two fives. Well, here's that partnership we've been talking about. There's two fives, so the five can go out front, and anything that does not have a partner stays inside. Two times three is six. If you want that in-between step, you would write it like this. The square root of six times the square root of 25, and guys, the square root of 25 is five. Okay, one final example for you. The square root of 820. Now don't freak out, that's a big number, but remember what I said. Anything that ends in a zero can be divided by 10. So this would be 82 times 10, neither of which are prime. So break it down one more level. Anything that is even can be divided by two, and 82 divided by two is 41 and 41 happens to be a prime number. We've already broken 10 down into two times five, so that one should be easy. So when I'm writing out the factors of 82, I've got two twos, one five, and a 41. Here's that partnership. Two twos means the two is out front, and 5 times 41 is what stays under the radical. So 5 times 41 is 205, I believe. I'm going to make sure I get this right with decimus. 5 times 41. Yes, 205. Okay, if you need extra help with just this step, then go on, then email me and let me know and I'll send you some practice. Our next video will be how do I use this information to help me solve the quadratic formula? Happy studying!